Hello and welcome to this SQL tutorial with me, James from Matador Software. And today we're looking at the select into statement. I'll be using SQL Server and SQL Server Management Studio. We're going to cover a few key areas. We'll start with two slides and go right into our SQL environment. So we'll look at the background, um, comparing standard way of inserting data, insert into versus elegance and convenience of the select into statement. We'll then go into uh, more sort of use case style um, demonstrations where we'll look at a formatted temp table and how we can insert the results of a query um, to maybe break up larger procedures using select into. We'll then create an active employees table um, within a production schema. And after that, we can also create an empty table schema with the select into statement, um, again, based off the, the results of one of our queries. So some background here, ordinarily, if we were using the insert into statement in SQL, we would need to create a table first and then insert in our values using the insert into statement. So it's, it's a two step process. Um, however, when we're using the select into statement, we can efficiently execute both of these stages together. So it creates a table structure for the columns returned by our specified select statement um, and our query that we've executed. So the first step here, we're just going to actually, in, in SSMS, we're going to select all from our base employees table. Very simple, we've got an employee ID, first name, last name, department, date of birth, um, an is active flag where one um, denotes that an employee is active, email, and so on. So we're actually just going to create a query here um, where we're sort of formatting some of these results, introducing case statements, and so on. So we want our employee ID We'll take the full name where we concatenate with a separator, concat underscore WS function there. Um, the first name and last name where we just provide an empty space um, to join those two elements together. And we'll move through here. We want to display the department. That's fine. Um, we're going to want to look at the date of birth. Uh, but we can actually, um, again, alias it as date of birth, we'll, we'll retain that and we can format this so we get the date of birth, but in the UK format. So we can use the format function just to have the days, then the months, then the years, and that will work fine. From here, we're going to slightly adjust the is active because it's currently in a bit data type where it just displays one or zero, uh, one being true and zero. Um, basically meaning that the employee is not active. So we'll just uh, make this a bit more um, language friendly. So uh, we'll, we'll assign a value of one is works for the company and um, else uh, the, the employee no longer works for the company within that employee's table. And we'll just name it there with end as is employed and that will become the, the name for our column um, as per the result of this query. Again, work email address, department ID and region, and we can sort of finish this up. So if we were to just run this as a normal query and get the results exactly as we expect, we now get a full name. Um, we've made the active flag a bit clearer for people who may not be familiar with seeing things in that way with our true or false or, or Boolean or bit value. Um, but now we can actually introduce into, and this is where the select into statement obviously culminates where we can use a hashtag to denote a temp table and we can now insert the results of this query into a temp table. So you may commonly use temp tables to break up um, large stored procedures, obviously have the advantage that they're stored in the temp DB um, and don't consume memory um, if we don't do anything else to it um, as it currently stands. And now we've managed to insert the whole result of that query into a table. Now, maybe we want to use select into to create a table um, that's a bit more permanent. So I'm just going to take this query, copy and paste it again. Um, but I'm going to introduce, I'm not going to show the active flag. I've got the is employed, but I'm going to introduce a constraint where we only show active employees um, using the where clause. So where that is active values equal to one, we'll now return five instead of six people. Um, and I'm going to use a schema that we have. So let's say I want active employees, but I want this in a production schema. So you can see here within schemas, um, within our database, we have that production schema. 
Obviously important to note here that a schema is just a collection of database objects, including tables, views, triggers, stored procedures, indexes, and so on, where the, the schema that you would probably usually encounter is DBO, um, and it's just associated with usernames or permissions. So we may have many schemas in a database and here we just want a concrete active employees table um, that we can create with select into um, and put directly into our production schema. We hadn't created this table before, uh, but if we refresh this, we can now see that we have a production.active employees table. Um, and when we select all from this, you, you'll be able to see essentially it just returns the key data um, from that query that we ran. And if we go into the columns, we may have to do some, uh, perform a few changes here um, with the data types, but it was a convenient way to just take the results of a query and create a concrete table that's almost production ready. Now, another really interesting thing that we can do with select into is we can say select all from employees and insert, insert it into a new table called data transfer. And if we say where one is equal to zero, we just get the basic empty table um, using the schema of the, the employees table. So this can be really useful when we're transferring data. And as you can see in data transfer, we get all the relevant columns that we initially had. And if we run this select all, you'll see there's no values populated. By evaluating the condition to false, we get a nice skeleton schema. As usual, if you enjoyed this content, please feel free to like, comment, subscribe and share. Thank you.